Hi there, it's your resident spell hater here, but apparently there are some good ones I should try. Specifically, the invisible sorceries and the golden order incantations. I figure we should figure out which ones are worth a cast and which ones are worth a pass. Putting them together, it's like a day man. Fighter of the night man? To watch these ones live, follow me on Twitch. We're finding new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Join the Patreon if you want to support the channel. We'll have some exclusive videos to thank you. Just click the collections tab and make sure you're subscribed. If you let the sun set on another unsubscribe, day, you'll be in a nightmare of missed videos. Now let's get started on this dangerous night. It's a dangerous night. The night is night. We're starting off with some slicked back hair. Can't have a white bathing suit, but we will get sloppy steaks. Oh, and we're an astrologer, if that matters. Guess that means we're a Gemini because we for sure used to be a piece of shit. Limgrave, horse, and ignore Alex's cries for help. We're not using an Ash of War. It's gonna be just sorceries. For that, we can get the Meteorite Staff. It's not our final staff, but it's kind of a cheat code for early game as a sorcerer. Just get S Intelligence Scaling for free. At 20 Intelligence, the Staff of Loss doesn't outscale it until you hit upgrade level 19. At 30 Intelligence, you need upgrade level 21. And at 60 Intelligence, the Carrion Regal Scepter, aka Moon Mother's Mighty Masher, you don't even outclass it until you throw seven somber stones in there. Pretty serious. I do want the Staff of Lost, though, but we get Millicented after getting rotted, so we can't even bring her into some geysers to kill her in time. Oh well, guess I'll die. If you want to use a sorcery, it's best to learn some horsery first. We've got to hop all around the town getting the Staff of Lost, lighting a torch, and getting the Night Comet. It's like a regular comet. At night. For real, though, it's just the Comet spell, and the enemy AI doesn't know how to dodge it. That's gonna be uh, pretty, pretty, pretty good. Open the gate, run up to the Church of Plague, and say hi to the lady who murdered us earlier. It's okay, Millicent. People can change. I used to be a piece of shit. Vari's white mask, sloppy spur, that's when you put seppuku on the Ansper rapier. It's really, really good. But people can change. Fort Fairleth time, but from the Spirit Spring by Millie, weird routing. We're here for the Dectus Medallion and the Golden Rune with Radigan's Sword Seal. We only have a hundred runes in our pocket at this point, so we just drop them, then sell everything we picked up for 11,500 runes. That's money. Still not enough levels to cast Night Comet though, the best sorceries really ask you to have some high intelligence. Learning is a good place to make your brain bigger. You might also make your brain a big rock that can't shut off the call from the void of space, but it will be bigger. If your Dangerous Knights crew told you to jump off a bridge, would you do it? I would. Then I'd run and grab the Intelligence tier for a 3 minute boost to our Intelligence for 10 points. That's enough to cast the Night Comet. Speaking of Knights, imagine a dangerous one. In Fort Height, I'd call that a Fort Knight. Wait. Fortnite? That sounds weird. Now we have enough deck action to hit Altus, but first let's test the comet on the Tibia Mariner. I've heard this thing hits pretty hard and uh... I can't wait to shoot that fucker. I goofed up trying to jump the gap in Lernia, but did I learn from my mistake and avoid it the second time? No, learning is for fools. It's time for an Erd Tree Avatar. We can just kinda stay on the horse, run away, and blast it. That drops the magic boosting physics here for 20% more damage. Now to the abandoned cave, and hey, whoever abandoned this cave, Good call. This place sucks. It's like the opposite of a total party house. Let's see how dangerous the Night Comet is with the Physic Boost against the Clean Rots. Oh boy. Uh, okay. Don't want to get ahead of myself. Night Comet might not be a pass. This is feeling like a cast. Gotta figure out how to make money on this thing. It's simply too good. Okay, not enough damage to put a dent in the gray old dragon. You might say, we'll just go kill all the other baby dragons. And hey, I don't think you get why people do this. Killing the dragon by hitting its toes gives you free runes without the trouble of fighting a boss. Fighting the baby dragons is like fighting things. Who wants to do that? Instead, we'll buy the knight set because you know, knight. Then we'll fight Nerdjuice, who doesn't dodge the comet, and Patches, who also doesn't dodge the comet. Are you dumb? Now we have Pickles and the Scarab for some big money, but for the putrid tree spirit, we don't have enough blue. Blue has the most antioxidants. Come to think of it, we don't need any red. We can't live a single hit. See, we get hit with one single beam from Elden Stars Jr. and die. Yeah, that's what I mean when I say dangerous night's crew. We don't have vigor. Come back and kill it pretty easily just by running around in circles and shooting it when we have time. It's cool to cast stuff on horse back. The Knight's Cavalry used to be part of our Dangerous Knights crew. Well, we went to Blue Dolphin for wings once. It burned down. It's gone now. John Rabani's ass out. Works with his brother now. We died the first time, then got it stuck, so hey, let's just shoot him. Never mind. He fell off anyway. Silly. Good. Grail's right there. We can shoot him in the head. Save time. Save a pickle. Get some money. Now we can see how bosses are gonna go against Margit. It looks like they're gonna go pretty good. Pretty darn good. 
Even Smarag, who has 80% magic resistance, is kind of fine. We run out of magic, but I'm a master of baiting. Someone made a whole long video about it. Google Tulak baiting on your work computer to find out more. When these beetles die, you get your magic flasks back. So you can keep shooting stuff until the dragon dies. If we can get the dragon to hit the beetle, we can keep shooting it. Didn't have to fight it to grab the key, but I wanted to. It was fun. Raya Lucaria time. Get the carrion dangerous knight set, then fall off. Red wolf time. It has no health. We have huge damage. Sure, it chases us really well, but that's kind of on us. We were shaking a stick at a dog. That's her house. She's doing what's right. Yeah, I'm not doing Renala yet, though. 80% magic resistance is a bit too much. Instead, go through to the other side of Bellum, then up to Altus. Didn't pack enough blue juice for Goad for Technically, this doesn't count as a loss, but you do have to waste time going back to get the juice. Then just back up and shoot. It's what you do when you have a big laser. It's something we had to learn when we got stomped on by Radon. You really just can't compete with these horse hogs, especially because Radon has gravity pull balls. In phase one? I thought that was a phase two thing. Okay, weird. We'll just stay back a little bit further while everyone else slaps him around. While he's distracted, we just hit him with a bunch of comets. Even when he turns into a comet, doesn't matter. This kind of just cooks. We can make it cook even hotter by running down the danger path and fighting Godric. Dude takes like three steps before we're putting him in the phase transition. Completely deleted. Then we get a pocket, get the great rune activated, and get plus five to every single step. We're really only benefiting from five more intelligence in mind. Not all that helpful. Radon's great rune might be better. Pretty messed up that Radon's great rune is the best for monostat casters. Ranala having the respec great rune feels like kind of a waste. Just have Rodrika do the respec so Ranala can have something else. Whatever. That's fine. Speaking of Ranala, let's give it a shot. We quit out for Moongrum. Not sure why I don't just shoot him. It's not like he could dodge it. Ranala also can't dodge. Ever. She just kind of lies there. Lays there? I'm not sure. We can bonk the kids with our learning stick and save our mana for mommy when she gets down. It's just not gonna happen. 80% resistance is ridiculous. Now the Mimic tier does not have that. It also doesn't have a brain. Blam blam. We destroyed ourselves even more than vaping destroys the lungs of the youth. Wait, if we want to beat the teacher and the school kids, we just have to introduce them to smoking. O'Neill is too stupid to dodge and his soldiers are bad at aiming. We can dodge them by just walking a little bit to the left or right. Where do they go? There they are. They're listing lazily to the left. Go left, left. Boy, this guy knows some maneuvers. He summons bigger soldiers, but they're really far away. Dorks. Give Gowry the needle. Give Millie the needle. We're introducing a lot of young people to harmful substances, but who cares because now Gowry will sell us some vapes. The kids get bonked, and then we start vaping with the Night Maiden's Mist. Is this secretly a High Lord Volnir secret starting class? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe the Night Maiden's Mist does 1700 damage over the course of 17 seconds. It will always do that amount of damage. It can hurt us if we walk through it and gets bigger if you charge it, but doesn't do any more damage to larger bosses. That could also be what's happening. Phase 2 is a little more tricky. We have to run around and avoid everything, but Renala stands still pretty good. Moons, lasers, dogs. If she had a kitchen, she'd throw the sink at us. Killing someone with vape clouds won't be fast, but vaping will kill you. Tried it when I quit smoking once. My lungs felt like popcorn. It is so important to get the Moon Mother's Hole so we can get the Moon Mother's Pole, except, whoops, I forgot to not eat Moon Mommy's Hole, and now we have to get up with the turtles. Back. And bring that mommy's hole to the twin maidens to get her pole, the regal carrion scepter. It's the best staff out there, other than loose stats, but there's no big mana penalty when we use it. After all this effort though, obviously we're gonna use the moon pole. <laughs> EG sells stones for whatever pole we want to use, then just run through Carrier Manor, blow up Loretta, ignore her higher magic resistance, and talk to Ronnie. Just running through a bunch of holes, say hi to Phalanx Demon's holes. That's not my name. Uh, sorry, thought that was a term of endearment. Maybe we should have paid the demon's tolls. Grab some somber stones on the way down, and hey, we're done with Noxtella. And the first stream. Wonder how the second stream will go. Probably not this smoothly. The shout is the night, man. We're back and running through the Lake of Rot. It's an area you don't want to spend a lot of time in. Let's get out of here. This place is covered head to toe in shit. Cal bunk down a grave and fight Astell, but it beat us before we could even start the fight. We didn't bring enough blue juice after switching out our red juice for the poop lake. Happens all the time. Coming back, fighting Astell with a ranged option. 
kind of sick. Bongos don't matter, we just keep blasting, love that. Couple Noxtella bosses, just light a torch and boom, it's Regal Ancestor Spirit time. This deer is jumping all around, but I couldn't care less. The Valiant Gargoyles also like to run around, but they're not part of the Turbo team. So I just make sure they get their just desserts with a bunch of laser beams that they can't see or dodge. On our way through the Deep Root Depths, we squish some ants, then fight Thea's champs. They don't dodge, it's awesome. Imagine casting spells NPCs can dodge, couldn't be me. Gets a little tricky when there's three of them, but we're able to back up and shoot them enough to win. Sorry if it seems like we're just doing one thing over and over again, but the other invisibility sorceries are just a vape cloud that doesn't deal reasonable damage at this point in the game, sword invisibility spell that does nothing in PvE, invisibility that stops working after you aggro an enemy, and worse versions of Night Comet. Oh, and the spell that eats spells. Let's get the spell that eats spells. Eternal Darkness. Royal Capital Time. We shoot the Erdtree Avatar, we shoot the Grave Warden for the Ritual Shield, and now we fight the Godfrey Shade. Normally, Godfrey has a dodge when you cast a spell, making him dash forward and stomp. Absolute Giga Chad move just to power into a spell. You won't see him do that here though because, uh, he, you know, nothing dodges. Easy win. Gilka is also an easy win. Just wanted to put that Ritual Sword Talisman in our pockets for even more absurd damage. Remember how I said loose stats would do more damage but cost more mana? Well, let's get expensive. I've got expensive tastes. Light that last torch in Celia. They keep bringing me back to Celia. And the Nox sisters aren't a boss. They're just enemies with a health bar. You think I rigged this? I didn't rig any of this. I've been waiting a long time for a hit on Tulak and Mango. We can now enjoy Lustat's staff, but not fully until it's upgraded. So, Sombra's 9 and 8 from the Dragon Barrel. Hell, let's activate Radon's Great Rune for later while we're here, then test our plus 9 Lustat staff on the Black Knife Assassin. I like this guy! Yeah! I really like this guy! Yeah, it makes Morgoth go so fast. I'll try and stall out the voiceover so you can see more of it, but uh, there isn't much to say. I've uh, I've been thinking of posting some Magic the Gathering content on the side channel. Not really feeling D&D &D anymore. I don't know. Let me know if you'd watch that. Hey, more got done. For Biden lands, it's a great time to remember that nighttime is going to get more dangerous for the unhoused as the weather changes into winter. Pretty messed up that there are more empty homes in the U.S. than there are unhoused people. Would be pretty cool to do something about that. Hey, we're actually doing stuff uh, here, though. We fight the Knights Cavalry and the Black Blade Kindred. Not for any rewards, though. It's just easy and pretty fast. Mount Tops of the Giants, we do two more fast bosses. Hitting enemies when they don't dodge is so easy. Just ask Borealis, because uh, I didn't I didn't see he was doing the breath. Stupid fog, you made me look bad. <laughs> Come back, get Revengey Alice. He takes extra damage when you bonk him on the noggin. Then Vike. He can see through the lies of the Golden Order, but can he see these sorceries? Nope. Fire Giant is the next mandatory boss. We just shoot his ankle until phase two. Then I think I must have been spoiled. I remember playing and thinking the damage was bad, but watching it back, nah, this hits pretty hard. Fire Giant is just an extra large lad. He is carved up, a real carve of beef. Speaking of little buff boys, as we pop into Faramazula, it's time for the Godskin duo. Did you know that the big one isn't actually big, it's just padded fat of the armor? They goosed him. It's a goose suit. It's an old circus term. That suit almost rolls us out, but we're able to get up on the column and keep blasting away while Bernie swings away. Good old Bernie. What a champ. We haven't used a spirit ash for this run, but if y'all think I'm fighting the duo solo, you're off your rocker. That's just not what this fight is supposed to be. Swag jump, then bird run. It goes great with a gun. Who could have guessed? Tree sentinel down, and it's Malak time. 40 magic resistance isn't a big deal. Honestly, pretty standard issue at this point. Can you imagine if something was weak to magic? Like, Malekith takes a minute and a half and barely is an inconvenience. I'm sure this fight will also be fine with the Golden Order spells. Ha 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 ha, it won't be. Gideon actually gets a few hits in. Not like a lot of hits. He mostly just backs up and tries to cast while we back up and cast successfully. Even Godfrey isn't an issue. Sure, we get grabbed in phase two, but when he does the big earthquake, that just gives us a great time to shoot him down for free. Radagon and Elden Beast do provide a bit of an issue. Good old Raddy is just so aggressive, even if this spell comes out relatively fast, he can be inside us in a split second. Didn't die though, so it's Elden Beast. Bold strategy here, we're gonna back up and shoot at it. Can't believe it, right? You're floored, stunned by this advanced strategy. Only problem, we do not have enough blue juice. That's, uh, that's a bummer. Took like five minutes to get here. Ugh. Okay, little night comment thing. You want better DP? Yes, you spam them, no charge. But if you want more efficient mana usage, you charge.
charge. Knowing Radagon's timing a little bit better and our own timing a little better, we're able to save some mana for phase two by using the charged version rather than the fast version. I almost put more blue flasks in, but we didn't have to. Just focusing and taking a little more time to be a little more economical was the move. Just have to clean up the rest of the membees now. Let's run through the study hall, get the curse mark of death, and hug Fia. Hey, do you know why they call him four to sax? Because it only takes one, two, three, four hits to kill him. Ah, ah, ah. Do you know why they call Placidia sucks Placidia sucks? Because it sucks. It's actually fine. I just didn't realize he could close a gap that well the first time. Oof. And then the second time I thought we moved faster while casting. We don't. But being able to move while casting, underrated part of this spell. Some spells make you stand still instead of walking slowly in one direction. Those are worse. Being able to walk a little bit while casting, pretty good. Third attempt, we do better at recognizing when we can shoot him safely and when we can't. Then bait him into the corner. It's even easier since we can stand further away. And then shoot his butt a lot while he does the Omega Laser. Now you gotta pay the troll toll if you want to get into the castle's hole, but really just run. There's a lot of enemies who chase you through this area, but it's not too bad. Just kind of keep running forward. While we could go get unseen form to maybe make this a little safer, it would take longer to do the mirage puzzle. So, um, spoilers, that spell is going to be a pass. Shoot the ghost with our certified cast spell, Night Comet, then back up and shoot Nile. Kill an old man, go to the consecrated snowfield where we'll die to gravity. Unseen form wouldn't have saved us from that. Blow up the penguin noble's dogs before blowing him up. He doesn't like to dodge. Hey, we'll even go get the Eleonora tier because really we don't need any physic tiers like magic damage and uh, what else? Our intelligence is where it needs to be. Buy some more rune arcs on the way to Moog, then we kill Moog. Guess how we do it? Did you guess backing up and shooting night comets? If you didn't, you're wrong and kind of a fool. That's what we've been doing the whole time. You can shoot the archer in the liturgical town, but the spell pushes her out of the range of the comet. Wah, wah. It's fine. We live. Go through the rest of it and get to the hallowed tree. We do snipe the snail so the crystallion can't shoot us, just further invalidating any reason to grab unseen form. If you're using night sorceries, you can just shoot stuff before you have to fight it. It's so easy. Loretta also has lasers and an emotional support horse she's allowed to have in here for some reason. It's really none of my business. We'll just blow her up. Don't want to blow Melania up just yet, so let's kill the crab man instead, then go to Volcano Manor. The godskin noble couldn't dodge even if it could dodge Night Comet because he's so over encumbered. There's too much fucking shit on me! Easy peasy. Just a joke at this point. Right card without Serpent Hunter. Uh, oofa doofa. It doesn't go well. Night Comet can hit the head. Sometimes. Sometimes it wiggles out of the way and you can't lock onto the body for some reason. He is also never meant to dodge, which means our advantage is out the window. Dude just tanks, hits, and keeps attacking. Obviously a trample enjoyer. Not super common for his Rakdos color scheme, but not unheard of. Maybe he's Jund? I don't know. Feels weird putting forests in his land base when he wants to burn down a tree. Night Maiden's Mist won't work here. Remember, it always does 1700 damage regardless of the size of the target. He's got over 100,000 health, which means we'd have to cast the spell a hundred times and hit him with the full 17 second duration for a total time of 28 minutes at best. You could listen to all of Marcy Playground's self-named album in that amount of time, and it's a much better use of their time because they should not have been a one-hit wonder. Yeah, Night Comet doesn't get in trouble for this being rough. Let's just go do something else. Else. We fell down the elevator on the way to LFL, and then we can shoot all the little bugs in the Rotterfall. It's a nice way to make this a little safer since you can't run through it until New Game Plus. You're just not part of the Turbo Team. Until you're part of this Turbo Team, walk slowly! Anyway, Melania can't dodge Night Comet. Other spells she just completely invalidates unless they're slow or huge, but for Night Comet, we just gotta shoot her a bunch. Phase two, first try. Don't roll out of the way of the second onion. That's my bad for fumbling on the sticks. Back at it, just stay far enough back so we can run away from the ducky dance. It's easy peasy. Melania is a fight that either gets completely cheesed out or forces you to bash your head into a wall for two hours. Great boss design. Let's go back to another great boss, Rykard. But first, we'll upgrade our flasks with a trip to the Weeping Peninsula. Less than 15 minutes. You can barely say we dipped in. Still doesn't go great. Getting to phase two is pretty consistent, but he has so many attacks that are just a nightmare to dodge while you're trying to cast. I'm pretty sure the earthquake in phase one is the hardest attack to dodge in the entire game. Rumors have been floating around that their bones are in the arena, so you can jump on top of them and then jump out of the air to avoid the ground hitbox. Not true. See? The bones are his dollars. And then something bad happened. I had to use the restroom. I'm only human, but I forgot to switch the screen back while I was on break. The audio is still there. Ah, oh, these night sorceries, they're just performing so good. I'm so glad 
You can all see it too. It's weird how much they sound like the Serpent Hunter. I guess the game designers got a little lazy and reused some sound effects. By the time I realized what happened, the fight was over. Oh no! We beat the boss! I thought I came back from taking my potty break. Uh, that's still all Mambies in 6 hours and 36 minutes, 40 bosses and 15 deaths. Let's put Night Sorceries on our cast or pass table. Obviously Night Comet is a cast. This might be the best spell in the entire game. Having something that hits this hard that enemies don't dodge and keeps you at a safe distance is amazing. It even gets better in New Game Plus since you can carry two stabs of loss and get an extra 20% damage boost without the mana drain of loose stats. Vape Maiden's Mist goes into the pass category. You could get some value out of it early game, but after Altus, it is useless. And it can hurt you. And most bosses will move away. It is really only useful for some reason if you have to fight Renala and you're only allowed to use Night Sorceries. Otherwise, just, just hit her with a stick or something. Now, Phil, how can you review spells you didn't cast? Well, we didn't cast them, and they wouldn't have helped us. Eternal Darkness can be useful against things like Elden Stars, but the other attacks that are hard to dodge in the game won't get blocked by it. Placidious Axe's Omega. Mega Lasers, The Ducky Dance, Rikard's Earthquake, Radagon's Hammer Slammer, and Melania's Attack of the Clones won't get absorbed. You'd only use it for Renala or Elden Stars, the former of which just like, I don't know, fucking move out of the way. And the latter of which isn't a problem if you have 40 Vigor. You should have 40 Vigor by the time you hit the Elden Beast. For weird niche situations, you don't have the Vigor, maybe slot it. There's not enough reason to keep it in your inventory. And to go out of your way above Celia to go grab it. Ambush Shard and Night Shard are just slower, lower damage versions of Night Comet. And you can get Night Comet right at the start of the game without fighting any boss. You have to beat O'Neill for Night Shard and it's worse than Night Comet. They cost less mana than Night Comet, so if you're trying to skimp out on mana, maybe. But overall, you're gonna end up spending the same amount of mana, it'll just take longer. And I'll be real, spellcasting in general is kinda tediously walking in a circle and running away to shoot. Why would you wanna do that longer and give the bosses more time to hit you? They might be fine spells that work, there's just no reason to slot them over Night Comet, so they're a pass. Unseen Blade does nothing in PvE. It's a meme in PvP, but that's it. Unseen Form might make it easier to run around enemies, but is it worth doing the Mirage Tower? Not really. None of our deaths this run would have been saved by stopping enemies from seeing us, and it is not worth wasting the time doing a Mirage Tower. So, with seven Night Sorceries, one is worth casting, and the rest are either not worth the trouble of getting or are entirely outclassed by other spells you can get with no effort. That said, Night Comet by itself put this run in S tier with no Spirit Ash and doing all Membies. That's really strong. Maybe the Golden Order incantations will have some more spells worth casting. Dayman, ah, fighter of the night man. We'll kick it off as a prophet. Obviously, the day man is a man of faith. Cowabunga, Limgrave time. I forgot to grab the crafting kit. I'm sure that won't be weird and confusing later. Then we get up on that horse and ride it straight to church. Yeah, none of that blasphemous witchcraft today. We're doing this one for the Lord and the Physic Flask. Mostly the Physic Flask. Imagine the day man in Fort Height. This dude chases us up a ladder, so we have to kick him off. Master of karate and friendship, I guess. Now we can warp to the Dragon Barrow to run to Fort Faroth, get the other pieces of the Dectus Medallion, and get bashed by a rat. Here I thought I was the Rat King. Now we'll blast through Lernia, standard routing, warp, jump, get the key, and wait, we're not going to Bellum? No, we're going to do something smarter. Getting smarter with the intelligence boosting Physic tier. Might as well get the EG Grace right away, Lord knows we'll have to come back here later anyway, then we warp to Bellum, and boom, we're in Altus. Lots of important things in Altus, first the Sacred tier, just cause, I don't know, why not? Then the Golden Order Seal, it scales with intelligence and faith, and isn't the best to start off with, so we're starting off with it. It'll give the incantations we're using a 10% bump. Might as well grab some seeds while we're here. Why wouldn't we? Oh yeah, trebuchets. They can actually throw a 90 kilo stone over 300 meters. You know why that isn't an option for the player characters? Because it would be overpowered. We'll just go the other way. Say hi to the day man, the first day man. For some reason though, when I try to grab the mask, it won't pick it up. Firmly grab 
desperate. And that's another 10% buff to the Golden Order spells. Neat. Say hi to Korn, tell him to go to Altus, and tell Korn where the Raisin Bran mascot is hanging out so he'll give us the Dickus of Light. Now we have a spell. That is a 13 intelligence requirement. That's why we have the Physic tier. We can get another Physic tier in the Weeping Penisola, and that will help our Dickus of Light. I'm a big boy who makes big boy jokes. Technically, we're gonna get the Sacred tier, then a Faith tier, and then two more Sacred tiers for four tiers total, but who cares? We got a Faith tier for plus 10 Faith and a plus 10 Intelligence tier. They're together, like a religious studies major or a cult leader. Now we gotta upgrade the seal, and Raya Lucaria Crystal Cave is a great place to get started with Somberstones 1, 2, and 3. Probably faster to just beat the Crystallion at the bottom. Boss is sort of a joke, you just have to break his stance one time. And we get to show off our rings. They're really bad at breaking stance. They do four stance damage per disc. That's the stance damage of a rapier's light attack. Really bad. By the time we throw a second Dickus, enemies will have healed off the damage of our first Dickus. Through this entire run, we do not get a single stance break. Also, we have to stand still, which might not seem like a big deal, but it means we get hit by all the Crystallion rings, and it hurts. Who throws it? Ring. Honestly. Yeah, lost to the Crystallion, not a strong start. Obviously, we need a better seal. Say hi to Raya, then talk to Mr. Krabs. We're crab people now. We'll just buy the necklace. I'm not really confident in our fighting ability just yet. Look, we can't even beat Gilka. That's bad. That's very, very bad. Warp up to Volcano Manor, and we have to throw hands at the ring, or throw rings at the hand. He's got five fingers for the ring. Actually, more. Creepy. Obviously, you can see that intelligence tier paying off. We bait the hand to touch the fire, then spiral around to get our hits in and scoop up the somber stone four for our troubles. In Volcano Manor Town, we grab the six and the five, crank the short cut, and test our damage against the Tibia Mariner. Sure, they're weak to holy damage, but that's looking better. Real test will be against Gilka, and yeah, much, much better. We're actually able to beat Gilka, a, ve a very easy boss. In the abandoned cave, we're trying to do early clean rot nights. Really don't recommend this unless you have a spirit ash or enough vigor to trade. We don't have either, but a little bit of this is on me. I've mentioned this in previous runs, but I don't like practice these. This is the most I've used the Dickus of Light, so I'm figuring out the timing of it as I play. And I get stabbed and grabbed a lot. With this cheap ass incantation, you're never gonna run out of mind. But if you don't pay attention, you could run out of stamina pretty fast, and then you can't dodge. So you get stabbed and grabbed a lot. And especially if you haven't invested in your endurance yet. Couple that with the fact that you have to stand still and can't walk slowly in one direction, yeah, you're gonna get hit. Oh, also though, it's just really hard to avoid hits while one knight is chasing you down and one knight is throwing golden rings at you. Who throws it? Ring. Honestly. But for some reason, we end up doing better the run where we're poisoned. I guess I just have to be more careful. <laughs> Consumption. But overall, it just takes enough practice and patience to get the timing down. We get the Golden Scarab to make more money. More money, again, against Nerd Juice. He runs forward and dodges, so we get him with the back shots. Then Patches. He also gets hit with the back shots since he thinks the shield will protect him. What a fool. That's Golden Pickles, and since it's a shorter stream, we end things off heading into the Knight's Cavalry. Hopefully, stream two will go better. It starts off a little rough, but it will go better. Knight's Cavalry just doesn't want to work with us. Makes sense, we are canonically the fighter of the Nightman. Eventually it drops so we can start working out that vigor, but since our first few levels had to crank faith and intelligence, we really don't get that many. Margaret will give us another pocket. He has 40% holy resistance, which is gonna be a pattern. It really cuts the damage down, but we're able to get these out fast enough to keep the damage up and get the win. Kill Gostok to go to the danger path and fight Godric. I think something bugs his AI with the windy attack. With a melee weapon, it'll enter up your poise so you can't hit him, and the wind blocks incoming projectiles from weapons. If you're using raw elemental damage, like the Dickus, you can hit him, and I think that makes him forget to jump or make wind blasts. So he's just like, coated in wind. It even happens in phase two and coats him in wind and fire. Mix wind and fire in with the earthquake, and you'll be living in a... He's not living though, he's dead. Now we can activate Godric's Great Rune, a big payoff for us with plus five to intelligence and faith, boosting our casting damage. Mind will give us a lot more rings to throw and more importantly, stamina from the endurance so we don't run out of stamina, vigor for health, faster casting from the decks. It's just a huge upgrade. We really get at least a little bit from every stat. Is it enough to help us beat the Godskin Noble? Well, not the first time. 40 Holy Resistance, yep, it's back. And he just won't give us any space. I think we can do it. It's just gonna require a lot of backing up and throwing. For Night Comet, we could just walk to the side 
inside and avoid his fireballs, but Dickus makes us stand still, so we have to wait until after the fireball would hit us. There are a lot of rollouts. First one, fine. Second one, also fine, but we got hit once. Third one is my personal favorite. He gets stuck on the column and the Dickus is just big enough to hit him through it. Nice. Fourth one hits us twice, which is my least favorite, but it comes right before we win, so I'm kind of okay with it. Getting a large lad out of our way will give us the route to the somber seven. You need two stone sword keys, but you can get one right on the way through the shortcut. Isn't that nice? Through the fog door, fall down a bit. Hey, there it is. Then get a somber nine and eight from the dragon barrel and have fun leveling up your weightless seal. The rune cost for upgrading is determined by how much things weigh. So this costs like four bucks, which is great because the economy is uh, in shambles. Let's use the big new seal on Radon. Hey, look, it's 40% holy resistance again. Who would have thought? Everyone dies at the beginning of phase two. We definitely need the distraction since we can't move while throwing. A few of them get in there. We chuck stuff and get the win for another pocket from the gals at the round table hold. For something to put in the pocket, let's kill a dog. A little dark, but hitting this dog really makes us look strong. Upstairs, we can grab the Radigan icon for faster casting. And with that, I think we're ready for the putrid avatar. 40 holy resistance, again, it's like an old friend. Run in circles, avoid the poop. It's slow, but we get there. By the way, shout outs to the blue flask. This is the first boss we've actually had to use it for. If you're a cheap bastard and don't want to run out of FP, the Dickus of Light is your best friend. Technically, Grail has 40% holy resistance as well, but you can get 50% damage boosts by hitting him in the head. Doing the math on that, it's some, uh, it's less than 40. Just wanted some more runes. It's not cheap joining the Golden Order. The more money you give them, the higher up you move in the ranks. It's a great way to organize a religion. There's no troll toll to get into Radon's hole. He's dead. Just throw him in the trash. I did get shot a little bit while I was checking on some correspondence. Don't text and game, my gamers. This mimic is really rolling today. It's like he doesn't want to die or something. This dog was giving me crap while I was lighting torches, so we killed another dog. It's not like it's a person. Now we can fight the regal ancestor spirit, who's actually weak to holy damage. Someone really tried to argue that holy damage is more favored than magic damage in this game because the ancestor spirits, tibia mariners, and death ray birds are weak to it? You don't have to fight any of those to beat the game. Two of them are already dummy easy, and it's just a nuts thing to say. We beat the ancestor spirit though, that's nice. I want some pickles, and we have a method for farming. We just have to beat Renala first. Quit out for Moongrum, bonk the kids with the seal. I don't know why we're not just using the disc. We will definitely have enough FP, despite Ranala having 40% holy resistance. Wow, another one. We're able to kill her in one cycle in phase one. Phase two also goes fine. Just gotta run away from all the ghosts and throw some discs when we can. That's all we can do until we get to the royal capital. Now we can respect to have way more arcane, hunt for the bird feet. Normally, I don't talk about the farming in the videos, but I do try to talk about deaths. And since I forgot to respect back to where we were after we went farming, we had no vigor and got killed grabbing a rune arc. But hey, if we have to go back to Raya Lucaria, might as well grab the Azur Glintstone Staff. It'll give you 40 virtual dexterity for your spells, but increases the FP consumed, which wouldn't really be an issue with how cheap the Dickus is. But it turns out it only increases the FP consumed by sorceries, not incantations. I really don't notice the difference in speed, but even if it's not really there, it's fine. Could be that I screwed up when we respect back and gave myself dexterity and intelligence instead of intelligence and faith. Whoops. Now we can delete Loretta. By Loretta, we'll do a bit of the optional Ronnie side quest that is mandatory. I like when words mean things. Knight's sacred ground is cool, but where's the day's sacred ground? Get the knife, deliver it, then go to the incel river main. We already did this today, and Estelle goes pretty similar to the knight sorceries. Having something to shoot him with just kind of works good. Just start blasting. Bah, bah. Hey, Sweet D is outside the gargoyle fight, but won't help us with it? Wow, D's nuts. The gargoyles can kind of sidestep the Dickus, but that's not too bad. Even when there's two of them, we just put out a ton of hitboxes and they're pretty big. They're gonna get hit by stuff eventually. It's slow, but steady. Into the deep root depths, bash the ants like they're rats and go in to fight a surprisingly problematic boss fight, Fia's champs. Really? Yeah. NPCs do this thing where they dodge your spells if they're not night sorceries. It just makes spells so shitty to use against NPCs in comparison to a weapon. It's why some Elden Ring YouTubers might say spells are trash. We have no red flasks left for the trio, so it's not going to be a first try win. I'd have to get like really lucky. I even have to stop to slurp some blue juice. Yeah, this is going 
fine. Wait, this is fine? Yeah, clutched it out. Somehow, I'll take that win. We're into the royal capital. Erdtree Avatar is slow but safe. We'll just skip the ritual shield talisman and dive right into Gold Free. He doesn't really dodge. He dives in and stomps. It's cool, but it makes this maniac pretty easy to beat down. It also opens up the path to the Golden Order Principa Prayer Book, which has Radagon's Rings of Light and a Law of Regression. Rings of Light is slower than the Dickest, only surrounds us, and costs way more mana, it does roughly the same amount of damage, but has more stance pressure. Will I use that instead of Dickus? No! And the Law of Regression cures some status effects, cancels out buffs, and blocks spells that are mid-flight. Is it fast enough to work if you don't anticipate those spells coming out soon? Not really. Do any enemies use spell buffs? Not really. Will we be getting hit with status effects? Not really. Two for the pass list, but we brought it to the dog pope and there's some good stuff we can get over here. One good thing. The Erd Tree Avatar drops a holy boosting physic here. That's going to be nice. Then we'll go get a talisman for our new pocket. Kill O'Neill, he dies fast. Then bring a needle to Gowry, bring it up to Millie. It's always nice to help Millie. Millicent's just a nice lady and I'm glad we're friends. <laughs> Yeah, when she dies, you can go back to Gowry, kill him too, and get the talisman to boost your incantation damage by 8%. So, um, I did that. The Black Knife Assassin tries to out karate us, but we just jump on the bed and play Nightcrawlers. More got time, holy resistance is 40. I'm shocked. Phase two, he starts throwing up everywhere. <laughs> Just throw the discs. I'm hoping this is still interesting as we spam the same spells over and over again. Maybe I hate spells because it's harder to make an interesting video about them. Time for the four Biden lands, and daytime is also rough for unhoused populations. If we can't house the homeless, we could at least put up some shade, comfortable places to sit, public places to use the restroom. Society truly hates the unhoused so much, we punish everyone just to make sure nobody gets to sit down if they can't find a place to live. Jeepers. Anyway, Mountaintops of the Giant stuff. The Death Rite Bird teaches us a lot about bird law. We're not actually well versed in it. It's just really good at closing gaps, has big AoE hitboxes, does ridiculous damage, kills your horse, has aftershocks. If you're off your horse, it's just not fun. Even though we're dealing more damage to it, since it has negative holy resistance. Not really worth the runes we get for killing it, but uh, we did it. Now we do have to pay the troll toll to enter the castle's hole, but it's a weekend, so it's free. That's nice. Nile time. We just kill the ghosts. It's interesting, the ghost. Then we can throw some Dickus. We throw Dickus at an old man, and then we can go to the consecrated snowfield. I just want to throw things at Anasia. She's running forward, but then goes side to side and dodges the rings a little better. Oh no, our one weakness, enemies moving slightly to the left. Ensha dodges worse, or just dies in fewer hits because it's Ensha. Learn from our mistakes last time. We don't stand still and let Borealis kill us. This is going way worse than the night sorceries, but at least this one thing can go better. Fire Giant Time, we throw stuff at the ankle in phase one, then in phase two, even if we hit it from the back, we're still hitting it from the front too. Boomerangs are so fun. You can hit it from the front and the back, then set a small fire, why not? For Amazula is fun, we bring Bernie in for the Godskin duo. God, what could be worse than a boss with 40 holy resistance? Two bosses with 40 holy resistance. It's fine, we've done this before. Back up, throw rings. We've also been rolled out before, but we didn't die then, and we won't die now. Bernie can tank, we can ring a ding ding. Malekith has 80% holy resistance. I didn't ask for that. We'll just go to the Halligdry instead, much better. The archer arches us in the liturgical town, then I remembered the rings have a dummy long range and hit them from the stairs. Easy peasy. Now we're in the big tree and can land our first swag jump of this run. The first swag jump is in the Halig tree? That's wild. Loretta time. I've got a pretty crazy idea here. We're gonna throw rings at her. Amazing. If only we could throw two more at the same time. Good news. We can get an extra large onion rings right down an elevator in Elifel. We'll try these a few places, but they have issues. They don't deal much more damage than a single Dickus unless the target is huge, but they cost seven times more FP than a single Dickus. So if all three Dickus is hit on the way in and out, that's six. And six is less than seven. Last time I checked, monkey gone to heaven by the pixies. And sticking to the standard Dickus lets us use way less blue flasks. So despite seeming like a straight up upgrade, it's only better if you really need to kill one weak guy really fast. Which will happen, but overall this spell is kind of a pass. Let's go to Mogwin for a bunch of runes. Penguin Noble isn't a problem, but the taller Sanguine Noble in the Dark Cave does get our 
out. It's so hard to see without any light. The Dickus of Light really doesn't do a good job of illumination. I think it would be a fun little buff if they just made caves lit. Not grabbing the Eleonora tier, we're just gonna raw dog Moog. Really gotta respect the range of this disc. He's up on the stairs and we're still hitting him. Moog's ranged options are just splashing us a bunch. It's not too bad. Boy, howdy though, that phase transition does cut you down if you don't have the tier. Gotta just stay back and avoid the spray. He's finally dead and about time. I've heard some troubling things about him. Gotta write a song that ooh, I wouldn't do it with anybody younger than my daughter. I don't know, little kids gotta be big, older than my wife, than my daughter, something like that. We'll do Placidious Axe next because I don't want to fight Malekith even a little bit. Bad sign when I'm going to Placidious Axe first. We throw stuff back up. He's got 40% holy resistance. Moog did too, but I forgot to mention it that time. Bait him over to a wall and then he does the Omega Laser into it. We win. Very cool. Can't delay it anymore. We gotta fight the Tree Sentinel. Oh, that's not Malekith. This is nice. He only has 20% holy resistance. It feels good. Okay, now there's no more delay. Time to suffer. <laughs> Yeah, Malekith fucking sucks. We do 150 damage per disc. He has 10,000 HP, which means this is gonna take for god dang ever because that 150 is only when we have the ritual sword bonus. If we get hit, we do less damage. We're fighting a brick wall with a spoon. It's just little chips away. That's all we can do. I'm honestly proud of how close we get the first time in the fight. We die, but it was pretty close. Attempt two, I use the triple rings and look at that big damage difference. That looks pretty much the same, but look at the mana cost difference. Wow, that's terrible. Okay, we just gotta get more damage on board and we'll get it from Anastia, but weaker and again. Holy Scorpion gives us 12% more holy damage, but lowers our defenses by 10%. We're just gonna die eventually anyway. Back at it again, even with Thicker armor, this is just gonna be bad. Gotta come back next time on Dragon Ball Z, where Krillin will die again. First Krillin joke. Uh, it's because this is the first time we've started dying a lot. Back at it, I realized since Moog is dead, we can get another Golden Order spell. Law of Filthy Casualty. You can take five hits, and then you explode and hurt the thing that hurt you. It sucks. Get it after beating Moog. What boss, post Moog, are you okay with hitting you five times? It is funny that you do a little TikTok dance to activate it. We really just have to run in circles during phase one, throw circles in phase one, which is slow and annoying before we can try for the lottery of phase two. I've gotten pretty good at dodging Mally's moves in phase two, but if you're stuck in phase two for a long time, it gives you more time to fudge up. And fudge up, we do several times. Wasting between four and five minutes each time. It's a slog. By the time we actually do win, we're really, really close to running out of any FP. I think we maybe had two or three more discs before we would run out and just have to start over. Finally, we catch a break though. After buying some new rune arcs with a weird amount of runes we had left over, we fight Gideon. I was worried about how fast he can cast, so I put on the triple rings and let him rip. It was the right call. He dies before he can finish talking, so this fight actually went better than it did with Night Comet. It's nice that it's getting a win here or there. Godfrey, we back up, throw a ring, and he'll dash into it like an absolute Giga Chad. He's so cool. I just really like this guy and respect the rush down hustle. Despite having to tank through a few shockwaves, though, we get the first try win. Now, Radagon! Oh, God, Radagon. Look, we had a chance with Malakath. You could see we were making progress each time, but Radagon, by himself? has 3,000 more HP than Malika. The same, 80% holy resistance, and he throws ranged darts faster than we throw our ring. They're like, is not a way this is gonna work? And even if we do get through this fight, the Elden Beast has 22,000 HP. After just two times bashing our head into the wall, I decided Melania would probably go better. Wrong! Yeah, so Melania dodges rings to the side. That just means that they, they just won't hit her, front or back. Triple rings can hit her, but the mana cost is way too high. If we want those to work, we need to respec into mine, sacrificing all of our vigor and probably some intelligence and faith as well, which would cut into our damage, which would mean we don't have enough damage to win. So yeah, that's not gonna work either. Thankfully, there's other spells the Golden Order can use that will be perfect for this. Oh, by the way, here's how effective triple rings is on Radagon. The impact 
wasn't effective. Sweet D will be our savior. Sweet D is dead, but we can still get D's nut and give it to the twin maidens to buy Order's Blade and some Cestus. Cestus is actually from Gostox. I, I want to clarify that. Sometimes I kind of rush through stuff and people think I don't understand what I'm saying. Like I know the Cestus are from Gostox. Okay, Order's Blade is from D, Cestus are from Gostock. We're all understanding that? Okay. After all, we need to be a master of karate and friendship. Now, Order's Blade requires 13 intelligence. Does it scale with your intelligence? No, very cool. But it adds holy damage to your weapon. And I guess that means we have to use a weapon. Wow, look how effective Order's Blade is against the Crystallion. It's so good. Then into the sealed tunnel for the Smithing Stone Bell Bearing 2 and back to the Ashen Capital for the Ritual Shield Talisman and Star Fists. But before we go all in on that, let's handle Fortis Axe. Carrie and Study Hall figure out that the Star Fist is obviously on theme for the day, man. The sun is a star. That's out during the day. Hug Fia a bunch and get to fight another boss with 80% holy resistance. This one wasn't so bad though. Fortis Axe doesn't have a ton of health. The odd disc that hits his head will get bonus damage. It's a first try win, just a little slow. Time to change everything about ourselves at the last second. Remember, if people don't like you, just change everything about who you are to be more likable. It's so easy. Level up the fists and get the iron wet blade to make the heavy infused fists. Look how great the Order's Blade does against the Golden Vow Knight. Go into the Volcano Manor Town, get the Earth Tree Seal, since Order's Blade only cares about your faith for scaling. Grab the Somber Stone 9, jump off a cliff because we can't warp. Use the Order's Blade on the Grey Old Dragon to get the runes we need. Go to Mogwin for the Somber Stone 10. Get another Larval Tier, max out the seal. Raise back to a pure strength faith build, no int needed. Stupid science bitch couldn't even make guy more smarter. Then the charge attack talisman use the orders blade on some beast men for the old lord's talisman to make our fists orders blade longer. Then heavy infusion of golden vow and orders blade to show it off against Radagon. Wow, this Order's Blade spell is doing great. I'm sure most of the damage is from Order's Blade. It's tearing up Radagon. Since that's what we're using, boy howdy. We were able to make it to the Elden Beast on our first try, and we won! What a terrific spell! Melania next, but I forgot a key problem. I'm bad at fighting Melania. Sure, most of the people who have beaten her would consider her the hardest boss they've ever fought, but I've played an actually hard game, like Kingdom Hearts 2 Critical Mode. Sorry, Melania, you have nothing on Lingering Will Critical. But Lingering Will always kicks my ass and so does Melania, unless I have something to cheese her with. We're getting to phase two pretty consistently, but I give up way too early and go one-shot Darwill for the Bloodhound Fang instead. Order's Blade should go on a blade, right? If we're gonna judge it properly? Dupe the Elden Beast Remembrance to level it up, kill a putrid avatar with Order's Blade, such a good spell. Pity his corpse has that next larval tier, then boom, we're a plus 10 with a more quality build. Bad idea. Yeah, I eventually would have to do this for Rykard, but really should have waited to do it. Bloodhound's Fang is awesome against Melania, if you can distract her with like a spirit ash or something. Using the Ash of War, we're whiffing left and right because her focus is on me, so she either dodges or uses a super armor attack to trade all of her health back up. The Fang is one of the best weapons in the game, don't get me wrong, but the Star Fists were doing better. Well, I guess they're also one of the best weapons in the game. I think there are a few reasons. Mostly, punching her doesn't lock us in like the Bloodhound's Finesse does. Also, we didn't get the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman. That's important. I think doing both of these runs at the same time is a great way to show sometimes you can cheese Melania, and if you can't, she's just really fucking hard. We can all relate to a boss bitch whose tummy hurts when they eat cheese. But I would say she's easier than something like Lingering Will or Orphan of Cost, just because she's easier to cheese than those bosses are. If you don't cheese her, she's harder than Orphan, but not Lingering Will. Kingdom Hearts is an actual game for actual gamers. Anyway, we get it. It just takes like an hour. Finally, Rykard. It actually goes fine. Should have probably done this before Melania for the runes, but we're stupid high level. It probably wouldn't have helped very much. Just Order's Blade, the Bloodhound Fang, and wow, what damage. Obviously from Order's Blade. So good. We finished all remembrances in 8 hours and 57 minutes, died 71 times, and fought 41 bosses. So, cast or pastime? Well, Dickus of Light struggles with Melania, Radagon, and Malakuth. Everywhere else, it's pretty good. That's a cast. Not higher than Night Comet. God, good God, no. But as far as spells you could spam, you could do worse. Also wish you could walk while you were casting it. Wish it didn't have an intelligence requirement. Did any amount of stance damage, but yeah, it works. It's good. Having a ranged option you don't need to keep blue flasks on hand for is nice. Triple rings isn't three times better. It's three times worse. Or seven times worse? Because it costs seven times the mana and rarely ends up dealing that much more damage. You need to invest in intelligence and faith in these spells, so having a 
steep mind requirement as well is annoying. You also just don't get it until the goddamn Halleck tree, so who are you using this against? Melania? Maybe some other late game bosses like, oh, I don't know, Malekith and Radagon? Yeah, this is a pass. Radagon's Ring of Light, it's slow, doesn't go as far as the Dickus, and costs a lot, and does holy damage. Pass, it's so bad, you know who doesn't cast it? Fucking Radagon. Radagon doesn't cast Radagon's Rings of Light. That's awful. Some quick ones. Immutable Shield raises your status resistances for your shield, not your guard boost, not your damage resistance, just your status resistance. Why do you need this? Are you blocking Borealis's breath? Pass. Law of Casualty asks you to get hit five times and you can't get it until you beat Moog or Gideon. I am the most vigor-pilled gamer you will meet and I think this is terrible. Pass. Law of Regression gets rid of buff spells. No enemies in the game cast buff spells that I'm aware of and it shuts down spells that are coming at you but it's too slow to actually do that as a reaction. Pass. Litany of Proper Death is only good against death right birds and tibia mariners. That's like a total of 10 out of 165 bosses. Pass. Order Healing gets rid of death blight buildup which insta-kills you. I guess you can use it before it insta-kills you against two bosses, Wormface and Fortisax, but hey, just don't stand in Fortisax's clouds. Wormface is a little harder to not get blighted against, but working against one boss is not a cast. That's a pass. Order's Blade is actually bad. I was joking when I said it was good. The best thing about it is it lets you use a weapon in your Golden Order only run. But as far as weapon buffs go, it's worse than just about any other one. The other ones don't have an int requirement and have better damage time. Sure, Blood Flame Blade requires Arcane and doesn't scale with it, but it gives you a bleed. Hell, Craig Blade requires no stat investment. It gives you more damage and more stance pressure. Comparing Order's Blade to other weapon buffs, it's probably the worst one. Pass. So, after two whole runs, we found two entire spells worth casting. I'm sure I'm going to change my mind and start saying, spells are good, fun ways to play the game as we move forward. To watch these runs live, follow me on Twitch. We find new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Join the Patreon to support the channel. It's the best place to do it and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next episode.